There's something magical about visiting the Alps of Bavaria, Austria, and South Tyrol in autumn after the summer crowds have gone home. The leaves begin to turn. There's a chill in the air as you leave on your morning hike. Frost begins to appear in the meadows, and snow begins to fall again in the higher elevations. Even though I was pretty trashed after my 12,000 mile road trip to Denali, Canada, and Colorado, I knew I wanted to return to the Alps before the fall colors were gone for the year. So on October 13th, I dropped what I was doing and jumped on a Lufthansa flight to Munich, and from there, made my way south through Bavaria into Austria. First on my list was a return trip to the beautiful mountain village of Heiligenblut, which sits at the foot of the highest mountain in Austria. It was pouring rain when I arrived at the Bergkristall Hotel on the 14th, and it was still coming down when I woke up on the following morning. Even though it hurt to get up early while it was still raining, I was glad I made that decision as the storm broke apart, revealing misty peaks in all directions. In Heiligenblut. It's very rainy. October 15th. Staying in the Bed Crystal Hotel. I just got a little walk before breakfast. Some of the higher peaks have snow. The leaves are changing. It's a very beautiful place to be today. That peak just opened up. Some clearing conditions here. Still a little bit of fog and mist. Didn't put in the uh, GoPro yet, I just wanted to get this. This is how I got out of my hotel. There's a little tunnel through this apartment thing. So I'm on my way out of um, Hallegebrut and um, heading to Leeds first. I still don't have any volume on this thing, what the heck? Uh, and then from there to Isinga Bea.
front of me. This year I'm on the second floor, last window. In autumn of 2019, I accidentally drove up the small walkway that you see in the foreground and summarily got yelled at by some of the local farmers. They had changed the rules since my last visit in 2017, and the town of Santa Magdalena had since built a new public parking lot to handle the crowd since this valley had become so popular after photos began appearing on social media. Val de Funes is easily one of the most beautiful and bucolic locations in all of South Tyrol. If you're thinking about simply driving up there and taking some photographs, be prepared to park at one of the parking areas at the edge of town before hiking up a few kilometers above the village for better views. It was clouded over and very hazy when I arrived on the evening of the 15th, so the light wasn't that great. But here's one of my shots from 2017 to give you a better idea of how this valley can look on a typical evening in autumn. On my trip to the Alps in 2019, I spent some time shooting around the towns of Sace, St. Valentine, and San Cipriano. I made the trip south mainly to get a reflection in a little lake above San Cipriano called Vunlega. The mountains above the lake are known as Die Rosengarten, which is German for Rose Garden. The title comes from the way they light up in red at sunset, especially in autumn. While I was exploring this area, I kept looking for a particular church in Sais, but never managed to find it. Since 2019, it was featured in a recent film called A Hidden Life. After seeing the church in the film, I promised myself I would track it down on this trip, but finding it turned out to be a bit more complicated than I had anticipated. What this church is of this town, it's nice little close, it's not quite as um, landscape-y as what do you want me to do here up here as um the others but it's cool east on Schlernstrasse via Schiliar and continue straight because it's perched right on top of the continue town continue straight then make a u-turn whatever the hell that was from google I went up like a little goat path trying to get to this church and it's the wrong it's either the wrong church or the wrong way to that church it's down there below me right there but that doesn't look like the right one that's the wrong church that is the wrong church it's a cool church but it's the wrong church the apartment um, after getting blocked off. 50 kilometer per hour speed limit camera ahead. Please watch your speed. Um, from uh, St. Valentine. 50 kilometer per hour speed limit camera ahead. 50 kilometer.
kilometer per hour speed limit camera head. Afternoon, evening light, almost six o'clock. It hits these uh, yellow and orange leaves, really lights them up nicely. Uh, on my way back to Lintz, Val de Arena, or Val Arena, Val Aurene, whatever. Uh, Big Shadow is not a good place for sunset. Did not go all the way up that valley. Need to look at that again and try and figure out what I was after. Um, but I know I passed dozens of fortresses and churches on my way here. And one of them was across the way. There's two or three churches that I saw that were way up in the hills. This thing is just like perched on the edge of a cliff. What the actual frick? This is a hotel. Cool. La la la. On my way up to Barita Segantini. It's my car. It's way down there. Tiny little bit of color down here in the corner. So I'll try to come back with a better sky if I get a chance. These peaks are crazy. So here's a view by the Segantini. It's gonna be better with the sky. And this is a wide angle. With the iPhone. And come down here. If you get low, you pull the mountains further down into the lake. So it's kind of like that. Taking off from Bahita Sagatini. I just had more footage facing it, but I gotta get out of here. It's an hour and 40 minutes back to Bolzano. I gotta do some shopping. Another view of all the um, yellow. Uh, As you may have concluded from my earlier search for the St. Valentine Church, one of my main goals on this particular trip was to focus on finding chapels that are scattered throughout South Tyrol, often perched in high and remote locations. One of my favorite chapels in this area is the Chiesa di Santa Barbara, which is located at the top of a small and sketchy mountain road in the San Genesio province of Bolzano. The chapel dates back to the 15th century and was constructed by mine workers from the Valparola Valley. The views from this tiny little church are stunning and well worth the white knuckle drive on a road that is more suitable for golf carts than automobiles. I have to uh, interrupt my time lapse if something really exciting happens, but these clouds just rolled in. It's like the perfect night to be up here. There's supposed to be nothing going on tonight according to all my apps. So I'm glad my apps were wrong. <clears throat> I know what's wrong with my voice. It's not like Clint Eastwood.
One of the greatest challenges when shooting in the Alps in autumn is finding the right weather conditions for the area that you're hoping to shoot in. In 2017, I couldn't buy a cloud over the 10 days that I was shooting in five different countries. In 2019, there were several days where the sun didn't come out at all and I just sat in my apartment watching the rain pour down in buckets. This year proved to be challenging in a different way as storms would break and clear skies would appear with almost no warning at all. So on October 22nd, I had my fingers crossed as I set out on my second attempt to find the St. Valentine Church in Sais. Okay, so I'm trying to get to the church before all the clouds disappear. I got a really bad feeling. That's not gonna happen. Look at that. I'm not gonna make it, am I? I gotta get to the top of this ridge. There's a couple of farms. Hopefully, won't be a big deal if I walk down. In spite of the odds, the low clouds lingered over the town of Sais as the Schlern Massif towered above. I was able to spend a couple of hours shooting photos and time lapses before the sun finally slid behind the clouds in the west.